Hey, Holly. Hey. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. good. Yeah, we're just having a catch up. It's, um, it's been good. Yeah, because you, you were at half chair um, a few years below me, eh? I was. Um, but I always kind of knew you because <laughs> you there was this big board before you went into the studio with a page in your sketchbook of you with your yeah. sort of <laughs> some of my, like, the worst sketches like some of them were like real like thumbnail just like crap you know like and then yeah. you're know, big as well no <laughs> yeah. kind of like famous I, I, uh, no you can't all, work. All, only among them yeah a, a, a small generation of have to prop me for some reason <laughs> yeah <laughs> which is funny because like um yeah it was the first time they actually put students work up in the corridor which was really cool like there's a lot okay. of people from my work on, up, up there as well like daniel o'keefe who i had on recently and yeah. Um, yeah. yeah some of kate's stuff might have been up there as well and um, yeah. yeah they had loads of big posters didn't they but for some reason yeah. the one my one ended up just by the door, right. so everyone saw it as we were going into the studio. <laughs> like, I like I knew before I met you, I think, just because yeah. I recognised yeah. your face every day. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. for the uh, the armour that I made, eh? The, was that the, the silver, yeah, the like yeah. Art Deco flight suit thing? Yeah. Uh, still very, very new style. Yeah, exactly, I still do that kind of thing, eh? Like, sort of, uh, kind of bit of Art Deco and kind of ridiculous cheesy retro sci-fi I like that sort of stuff <laughs> and it's been uh, cool seeing the stuff that you've been doing your Instagram's so professional looking as well with all your furniture things it's been really cool seeing all of that sort of stuff come out um, yeah. and yeah your your uni stuff as well I remember I popped into uni and you were working on like a puppet thing was that if mm-hmm. I remember right like a, or a, a stop motion yeah I, yeah there was a lot of there's a lot of different projects from there. I remember, I think my first one was the, because I was obsessed with the Narnia film that yeah. worked today. Nice, yeah, yeah. By the way, if you meet anyone who worked on that, the, so good. You'd love it. You, uh, if you come over to New Zealand, you have to um, try and come through the workshop because um, there's loads of like fawn armour and centaur armour uh, and stuff all, yeah. all around. It's, 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 it's beautiful stuff. Yeah, and um, that the art book for that was fantastic as well, like the yeah, crafting on there or whatever it's yeah. Mm-hmm. And then made the White Witch's ice staff. Oh, oh okay. Which I think was my first like prop that I actually made in uni, and um, and then at the, at the Star Wars wrap party, Tilda Swinton was there, who played yeah. the Ice Queen, and because it was free alcohol, I was very drunk and <laughs> I passed her on the stairs and I was like I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it and I um <laughs> I sort of like was like I'm really sorry this is I'm sorry but like I really love you and I really loved you in Narnia and your staff was like the first prop I made and now I'm in the film industry making props and she was Yay! like she like grabbed my hand and was like that's so wonderful thank you and I was like oh my god I think I cried drunk crying okay. that sounds like her as well eh? She's got that yeah. sound. <laughs> I think her son's in props as well now um, nice so she's got she gets it yeah so what film what rap party was that whole uh the Star Wars one. Oh yeah you is didn't she, come to she is she in nine her son her son was on it okay so she came along yeah that was Matt oh wicked yeah, yeah I missed that rap party unfortunately yeah I had to make it back in time for New Zealand summer because I didn't want to miss that <laughs> <laughs> so I was, yeah it was a bit after yeah things had started to wind down so I was just like missing my chance yeah <laughs> but um yeah I was good it looked amazing that rap party yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. from what I can remember yeah, and that's yeah. when we worked together the most, wasn't it, for episode nine, really, the longest yeah. period. Yeah, yeah like so I'm, quite a few projects. I think I met you properly on uh, Edge Tomorrow. 
was that your first film hall or yeah so I only did two weeks on that um Mm -hmm. as a bit of work experience which I think was like a a slap in the face with the film industry it was just like incredible like everyone basically just everyone was working on that it seemed like yeah yeah, it was a, so many people. Yeah. Was it like 180 prop makers or something? Maybe I'm yeah. just making that. It felt like because it was a huge moulding crew as well, because we were basically mass producing exosuits at that point, eh? Yeah. yeah. Um, well not mass produced, no. like we produced eighty exosuits, which is still a hell of a lot of components because it was yeah, a lot of components per suit. Yeah. That was that was really cool. Um, because that was my first ever sort of glimpse into it, so I turned up just like little face of like <laughs> just seeing all these suits hanging up and everyone sort of mass producing the stuff and meet, meeting everyone. Yeah. And I think I started with Ellen that day, and she was the only person I recognised from uni, so I sort of stuck with her. Yeah. And I think the first job was to put a Ikea flat back chair together <laughs> I um, was so nice. nervous that I was like shaking putting it together because I didn't want anyone <laughs> to think that I was bad to build your chair before you can sit down and start working yeah. <laughs> and I was like I First can't stop. I can't mm. got to build this chair um, yeah so it was were really good helping, what what part of it were you helping with was that sort of cleaning the sprues and stuff off yeah it was just dremeling yeah uh, rises yeah. off parts yeah um <clears throat> and yeah it was just good to see how everything worked in the yeah. workshop and yeah and what one was doing and um, that was mad because even in those two weeks we had tom cruise was, would organize parties in the canteen and yeah and then blunt would be there and it was all just like very intense of yeah, like yeah. we're on a film it was, yeah, it definitely, was, uh, definitely had that vibe. As, um, because everyone was sort of set up in the in the tent, right, on uh, yeah. at least end, um, yeah. so that that was quite, and you know, uh, all all the suits were like lined up down the middle of the tent, and you had benches down one side, which were you know full yeah. of people, you know, getting all the parts ready, and on the other side they were assembling all the individual parts into like arms and legs, and they were yeah. all getting attached in the middle. Um, yeah. And yeah, the mouldering were just going furiously fast, yeah. just like knocking out, you know, hundreds of components a day. Yeah. Um, big boxes, you know, van delivery vans full of components every day. They sort of get through yeah. and assemble. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah. I think at that, that point, while you were there, was I helping out with the stunt rehearsals at that point? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Because I didn't see you much in the workshop, but yeah, being in the canteen, you were coming back from being yeah. on set. Yeah, which was even more intense than the workshop atmosphere yeah. because of, they, were, they were really putting those suits through, you know, doing all their stunts in in the actual suits and seeing how far they could push them before they broke. And yeah, and then you have to chase them around. Could, in the, quite yeah. far, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we were like the pit stop crew that, you know, when they would eventually break stuff, that we would then swap components out and, you know, yeah. cable tie them together, whatever it required to, yeah, quick fix or like a yeah so yeah it was pretty crazy and tom wanted to do most of his own suits uh, stunts as well so he started you know rehearsing in in them as well man yeah yeah, quite an intense because it was one of my first film jobs as well i think it wasn't the very first but it was you know i did some work experience before uh while i was at uni but i think that was my first big job out of uni and that was nine months so it's just like you know that's by far through you to that point yeah, yeah yeah it was a good one to do eh yeah it's yeah. good that you got that as the first glimpse into yeah <laughs> did you see sets hall for that as well what? did you see any sets no i didn't i didn't see yeah. sets in that one. um but yeah it was only it was only two weeks but it was a good one and i remember jim Barr used to play like muse throughout the workshop and yeah i, like, I belong here yeah like yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've made it. <laughs> yeah, that was a good. Yeah, good. I'm a big Muse fan as well. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, and then the second one I did, which was longer. That was, I think, 
throughout the summer so maybe like four months um was guardians which again was like so many people some like there were so many people on that yeah. meeting everyone and even now I bump into people that I'm like oh I met you on guardians isn't it it's good to know it's good to have faces to sort of yeah there were two very different crews as well because it was Pierre's team for Edge of Tomorrow and more like um, Barry Gibbs and Mark Rocker, you know, that sort of team yeah. for yeah. Uh, and for Guardians and the Marvel stuff. So, you, yeah. you know, networking opportunity, you kind of met, you know, two of the bigger you know, yeah. crews. Yeah. Which was really good. Um, and I was in the armory mm-hmm. doing the weapons, which was good. Um, I didn't have the best time on it, I'm really honest. Um, which was kind of a shame because I worked really hard at uni because I knew that's yeah. exactly where I wanted to be. Yeah. And yeah, it was quite like the work was really great, and I learnt to acid etch and metal etch yeah. weapons, which has gone on to really that be really great for working for Tim and yeah. doing work for him yeah. but um yeah yeah I think the the atmosphere on that was it was disappointing <laughs> because it wasn't what I was expecting yeah. being sort of it was just more of like a hierarchy of like your trainees very bottom of the pile which is kind of a shame because yeah yeah there are yeah. definitely a lot of different schools of thought no two crews operate in the same way eh? like every every hod kind of has a different um approach i guess or yeah or, you know, like how strict they are on certain th- things you know yeah. um, and like you just mentioned working for tim he's kind of the opposite end of that spectrum he's very trusting and you know yeah. there's people who are even starting out uh, quite fresh a lot of opportunities you know yeah. and a lot of trust so um <laughs> Where, sort yeah. of as I've got older and are going carrying on working in the industry I'm sort of making like making sure from afar that the trainees that come in now I want them to have a better experience than I did so yeah especially the girls because it's, it is different and yeah. I don't want them to ever go through feeling like that because there's right. no need to um, so I sort of, I don't know, sometimes make sure that they're they're okay and have someone to talk to because I did with the woman I was working with, sort of talk to her about it. Um, mm. Kind of want to make sure that other people have a better experience. Yeah. And I feel like the people who are in charge more now a sort of from a younger generation and it's yeah it's not the same anymore than it was no. yeah yeah Which, there was like um i i experienced that as well like certain people had like i had it rough when i was a trainee so i it's now so it's my turn to dish out yeah. you know what i mean like that that, that kind of mentality um and it's kind of that's just how like trauma's passed around eh? it's just like that's how it like, continues to, you know um which is quite unproductive, but it's sort of quite deeply ingrained and some people do it maybe subconsciously or not even aware that that's how they're doing it or, or that there is another way that you can run things. There is yeah. more respectful or ultimately more productive as well. Like you get more, yeah. pe- I, I feel you get more pe- uh, more out of people, especially creatives, the more um, autonomy and respect you give them, you know, the more you can, yeah. yeah courage and nurture that yeah I think you either go one way as you think well I've been through that so it's my yeah. turn to have the power and, and sort of yeah right. be that or you go the other way and think I never want anyone to experience that so I'm yeah. gonna make sure that yeah that, that doesn't happen again which yeah I kind of feel is is getting better but yeah there's still a little way to go maybe but mm. I'm just glad I'm not a trainee anymore because that was rubbish yeah yeah, yeah. 
it's it's such it's such a complicated game because there are so many different uh, no no one ever has the same pathway career no. you know what I mean you can't speak to anyone there's no uniform experience for being a fran- freelancer and in, in the film industry you know it, everyone's had a different sequence of bosses everyone's had a different experience you know on, on either end of the spectrum the other side of it is like some people you know are given too much responsibility too early you know and, yeah. and that that could be too much as well so it's just yeah. like there is like a happy medium kind of thing and yeah, yeah mm. interesting yeah. So, uh, was your experience after Guardians better? What What did you go on to after that? Yeah, it was um, Tarzan. Yeah, yeah. Which nice. was with Jim again, who, after working on Edge Tomorrow, I really wanted to work for again. Yeah. And that again was like such a big crew, but of young younger people. There was yeah. so many trainees and juniors on that, which was really nice because it was just sort of like similar ages all working together and because it was it was 12 hour days and we did Saturdays like 11 hour days it was really physical and it was hot and it was really hard work but I feel like that sort of made us all really close because I don't know you know (laughs) when you're sort of all exhausted and tired and you all just pulled together to get something done um so I made really good friends on that um yeah I mean, the film wasn't that great. I watched it recently, but I'm not, I really love being on that film. Um, yeah, I had some really good people. Um, so yeah, that was that was a really good one, and I got to do yeah, a lot on never, the set. You never know at the time whether it's going to turn out to be a success or failure, so you just got to no. enjoy it for what it is at the time. Yeah, and, you know, I had a good time. And, um, so. Yeah, yeah, you're so right about um, almost like the harder it is, the more bonding it is as well yeah. like like it's almost like that sort of you know um like band of brothers kind of thing yeah. they've been through it together <laughs> like, yeah. not to that extent they've been through something that, that weird that thing that understand. like almost <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah i think i remember um me and charlotte who you had on um we it was there was a storm and we'd stored everything outside because it was a really hot summer so we could store everything we didn't have room to store it in the workshop so we had vines and leaves and everything outside and then there was a storm and it was up to me and charlotte to sort of go and cover everything over with tarpaulin and and it was so awful <laughs> like the storm was so bad that we were just drenched and just running around just trying to like cover everything up but we were just crying and hysterics of just like the situation it was just like what is going on and there were just there was slugs everywhere and there was mud and um yeah I think me and Charlotte just yeah. bonded all the, film. The, of the film industry because that was, was that was one of Charlotte's first films eh so like that was her yeah. first window into you know <laughs> yeah. after like, working at the Harry Potter tour you know um, yeah. where it, it was all like made out to be you know this very glamorous career Living in there with slugs and mud and <laughs> <laughs> raincoats and <laughs> yeah and like paper suits with the little hoods up sort of yeah, around. <laughs> yeah that's, it was tough what were you but... making on Tarzan oh sorry I was doing vines sort of oh, yeah, yeah. producing vines um we had it was me, Sean, Tobin Dugan, and Isaac, and yeah, yeah. Had tables yeah. of sort of plastic, long plastic bags, and we had to fill them up with foam. So one person yeah. pumped, and then me and Sean were sort of like running up and down the table, spreading all the foam, so it would. Nice. And we just I end think, up. Um, Kate, Kate a bit uh, getting involved in that at one stage as well. Yeah, yeah, she was painting with us after that. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was such a big scale, and yeah. there's just so much to do that we had it's to plan it. It's interesting. Thing. You don't think of that as a, a standard prop that you'd have to make, you know what I mean? So the, the fact that you guys kind of came up with a a whole method, you know, that... Yeah. I, I don't think anyone 
knew that that would work, but they tried it and it did. You know, like, yeah, fair play. Yeah. Good. Oh, it's so good. I still have, like, they a look little... great. Yeah. yeah. I think I think we pulled it off. Kind mm-hmm. of. Yeah, yeah. that was good. Um, Between that and the Gunnera leaves, the, those crazy moulds as well. Like, oh my um, the, there's a, a, a clip going around on Facebook of the hydraulic moulds that they made from just because it was so big and so heavy, the, the presses, you know. Yeah. The big... And then people would have to get inside them to clean them out and they were wearing helmets because you'd be in this sort of like mold that uh, that was incredible it was cool uh, really yeah good. <laughs> <laughs> I, you wouldn't think of that as a prop job either you know like it's just so no. incredible yeah no that awesome. was really good. yeah um and then i think after that i we did the show for uni because I was still at uni at that point and because I'd done some etching weapons on Guardians I sort of did a sword for my final piece for uni oh, nice. and so. then met Tim Wild Goose at New Blades which is the show that we yeah. did um, and he was looking for someone who could etch metal which is perfect yeah, <laughs> um, they did a lot on that and then, yeah, so I started working on King Arthur, which is where yeah. we met. We were on that. Together. Yeah, we, that's where we met up again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our careers are kind of... Sort of. Know. Like, <laughs> no, I like, I like so you just connect with people and then you don't see them for a while and then... Yeah. Up again. Um, yeah, that was really fun. You did a great job with those, the, um, the Excalibur swords, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, so I did the blades on them. And the, did you do the handle? Um, I assembled a lot of bits. Like, like uh, I kind of came on it. The, the guy I replaced the guy who basically made the patterns for it. So he, yeah, he, he, yeah um, t- another Tim uh, had made the patterns for it, um, but he had to go off onto another job. So they they got uh, sent off, and I think they were cast in. Um, I want to say pewter, but I'm not sure exactly what metal it was. You might remember. Um, yeah, anyway, like a yeah, really nice, easy to work metal that came back uh, from sand casting. And uh, yeah, there was just a little bit of Dremel and a little bit of assembly involved in all of them, sort of gluing them. And yeah, there's yeah, loads of a bunch of hero swords and a bunch of, um, you know, uh, softer uh, stunt ones. And yeah, yeah, no, I, well, yeah, I actually really, really like how they made those swords as well because I got involved in some of the other. Uh, assembling some of the other hero swords as well and they yeah. all had the same um uh, kind of almost like a modular system in terms of like how they all fit together so you had the sword with the the tang or whatever you know the the, the yeah. uh, great bit uh, you know for the handle and yeah. first of all the cross guard slid on then the handle slid on and then the pommel slid on and then there's a little nut that was hidden usually in the pommel that sort of tightened it up and it was just like you could crank it down, it was solid, you know, yeah. you could change it out, up, you know, and yeah, genius. I thought that was real smart. Yeah. yeah. But then the same blade can be used for multiple swords, you know. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, ordering a whole batch of that, that same sword and, and you wouldn't know they're the same swords because they've all got very different components that screw onto them. But yeah, yeah smart, eh? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, really, I really enjoyed that film. Yeah. Um, uh, got to do a lot on set as well because yeah. when there wasn't so much model making to do we we were in the same workshop as the prop men mm-hmm. and got to know them and then when tim was short on work they were like oh come and help us on set we'll give you a few extra weeks so went and did some dressing that was really fun yeah. um i kind of love i love being in the workshop and just having my own little space and making stuff but I also love seeing it on set and going and watching some filming because you, you feel like you're part of the production then not just being away in a workshop yeah um, yeah and yeah. That, he'll let you go and have a look and he would yeah. be like come with me because your weapon's on set and then take me to have a look and like 
um, I went to watch one scene with Jude Law because I fetched his dagger and yeah. it was the scene where he kills his wife. Yeah. And he took me on set to go and watch that. And I was just like, Jude Law is using my dagger. <laughs> He's using the thing that I wear, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's nice. Cool. I think I made the scabbard for that, Holly. So, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's funny, eh? Yeah, cool. That's good that you got to be that as well. Yeah. Mm. Um, I, th- I did the reshoots for yeah, that as well. That had like a nice spiral or something, eh? Etched into it, was that? Yeah, yeah. it was like leaves, little vines. Oh, that's it. Leaves, and then the um, someone else, I think Kat, Mary Jew, sculpted their hand. She's such a amazing sculptor. Yeah, right. I've got the shoes on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Like, so with the etching, Holly, how do you do that? You know, um, just for people that don't know, you know, what that involves. Um, using vinyl. So we'd have a design on Rhino or like on CAD and then mm-hmm. print that off on the vinyl cutter. And then yeah. whatever you want to be etched, you take out of the vinyl. So you read that bit, stick it on the metal, and then whatever's exposed will get etched into the solution. So you dip it in and just loads of tests of how long, how deep you want the etch. It depends on how long you put it in for. Um, it's quite simple, but it's also you've got to be really precise and make sure that nothing bleeds through because it's easy for the acid to sort of get into other bits that you don't want etched. Um, mm. so yeah it's simple but it, it's a lot of prep and like you you can't mess it up yeah 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 especially uh, the Excalibur blade itself had like a really sort of almost like uh, what do you call it um I, 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 it was Damascus I, I, Game of Thrones where they got the Valerian steel, but it's like that yeah. sort of folded steel that they have with Vikings. What's that called? But um, I don't know. It'll it'll come to me and I'll just fight it. Uh, Damascus. <laughs> Damascus. That's what I'm thinking yeah. of. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I drew out the so, pattern yeah. of Excalibur. Um, mm-hmm. sort of drew it out first, and then we put it on the computer, and then got that made into a vinyl sticker. Well, so. Yeah, that was really good. But then it's eatable as well, I guess. So you can do multiple, yeah. you know, copies of the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good. Yeah, and that in the film gets so much screen time. It does. That's amazing. Yeah. And it, all the posters as well have it on. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. That was that was really good. Um, and then after that, I think I did Fantastic Beasts. Yeah. Which um. Was amazing. I'm just, very hot. I'm just gonna, gonna shut the door so we don't have so much noise. And uh, it looks like we're back again. Okay. Okay, um, so you, were, you started to tell us about um, Fantastic Beasts as the next one, eh? Yeah, so that was with Jim Barr again. And I couldn't turn that one down because I love Harry Potter and I had to get out, I should be on it. Yeah. Um, it was a good one. Um, and I sort of told Jim that I was a big, big fan, which yeah. um, he sort of came up to my desk at one point and was like, do you want to, do you want to make some ones? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, which is really kind because I was still only a junior and yeah, that was really nice. And also you sort of, he gave me plenty of notice and yeah. just said, practice, like, do loads of practices. Don't worry if you don't get it right the first few times. Just have a go and see how you feel, which was really nice. Um, yeah, yeah, amazing. Scary. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I got on the lathe and had loads of hardwood because we used like really nice wood for it and yeah just basically you had to go really slow because it it got down to a really fine point um and I wasn't using a wood lathe I was using the engineer's lathe 
so it was just really slow sort of like shaving off little bits at a time um and the one unfortunate thing about it was that because they had some really lovely handles um that I thought they'd be sculpted so there was sort of like a shell one and a crystal one and they're really beautiful but they they were 3d printed which I thought was a bit of a shame but I, they looked brilliant yeah. um do you know if they digitally sculpt them probably zbrush you think yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um nice. yeah which there was a lot of 3d printing on on that film yeah, yeah. A shame. That, that was quite new at the time, eh? That was the sort yeah. of one of the first jobs that that sort of started to come in for, you know. Yeah, yeah. interesting. So they had wood, you know, real wooden points, and then yeah. you know more the the, the, the detaily part. They printed that part, eh? Yeah, they were printed. That's so cool, um, though. Hold. Um, no, they you looked know, good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they got cleaned up. Some of them had sort of metal casings for the for the shell and the and the crystal mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, so they got plated, I think, or met, metal casts, something. Um, yeah. So they they were really nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, it was really. Cool. Sorry, I was just going to say it's really cool that you were working with um, Jim Barr and and presumably Pierre Bohanna was the yeah. uh, promise the and both. Harry Potter. Yeah, they were the original original Harry Potter, you know, original yeah. team for that through all of them, eh? So. That's cool. Yeah, really big no. part of the wizarding universe to you know join the guys who made it originally and get involved yeah. in that. And then Tracy, who made some of the original ones as well, she was working on it as well. So yeah, could sort of go and talk to her about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, no. really cool. Yeah, there are a few... of, well, like. That is the ultimate A to make something yeah. that you recognise from the franchise that you were, yeah. Yeah, and then watching the film and them animating your prop. So yeah. when they do that, yeah. stuff comes out and stuff happens. Yeah, <laughs> that, was yeah. Really cool. that was a good one. Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah, and there's been like a lot of other things after that. Um, I came out of film for a little bit because I was just it was a few productions of really long hours and mm. Saturday and I got a bit tired <laughs> um yeah. so I kind of wanted to slow it down a bit and do model making that wasn't 12 hour days yeah so I went to a company and that was I learned a lot on that um what company is that whole it was Atom oh, yeah. in Ascot and it was sort yeah, of right. products and window displays and and things like that. So that is that out towards like Cambridge short direction? Like, In you know? Ascot. Ascot, okay. Yeah. But a bit further than London, a bit, you know. A bit further, but kind of near where I lived. Yeah. So like shorter commute then shorter days and stuff and still model making. Um, but I did miss sort of the production side of it and I don't know I just kind of missed film at that point um, yeah. and what, what projects did you get involved in through that company then like um, I was working on um, Damien Hurst stuff so making some stuff cool. for him that yeah, was good yeah so that's giant scale um, yeah. Um, yeah, it was like giant scale pipe cleaner animals at that time. Um, right. <laughs> really weird stuff. Yeah. But it was a nice, like, other side of prop making that I hadn't thought yeah. of before. Yeah, I actually really enjoy making uh, scaled up things. Like, there's something quite satisfying. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. it is, and um, it is proper model making because you know you have to take exact dimensions and then. You know, yeah work out how you're gonna do that and you know yeah yeah it's cool sort of, um stuff for shops shop displays so also learning about making cabinets and drawers that are actually going to work not just a prop for a set yeah things that yeah, she yeah, yeah. wearing going to last yeah. so that, that was really good to learn um yeah. and then i think i think they 
they were going quiet for a little bit and I picked up my phone and I had a little text from Joe Harlow Yay. saying Star, I'm, Star Wars is looking for people do you want to come on and it was just literally like the perfect timing because I was like yeah I really do um okay. yeah and then met you again on Star Wars and now I'm at yeah Oh. Yeah, because we we were crewing up um, big time because we had the big rush to get the uh, the Star Destroyer, which had like two hundred and fifty odd panels involved yeah. in that, and, and the Rebel base was massive that had quite a lot of stuff on that as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah we needed, yeah, you know, Mark was, yeah, we could, we could, yeah, it was good. Eh? We got yeah, yeah. juniors assistants, so. It was like yeah. trying to think back to people that I knew that were, you know, keen and, and good and, you know, uh, yeah. And especially the fact that you'd done some vinyl stuff. I knew that you have been sort of keeping track of. I think we had a lot of friends that crossed over. So you kind of hear, you know, how people's careers are going and things through that. So, yeah, it was good to actually, yeah, work together again on that one. And yeah. Yeah, we had a, a lovely little team doing that. We did. Uh, yeah, it sort of restored my faith in the fact that I do like working in the film because yeah. of the sort of yeah bit bit tired a bit bit sort of thinking like is this what I want to do and then coming back on Star Wars was I don't know kind of like coming home and and also because I got I was a bit older then I wasn't treated like a trainee and junior like people actually yeah. talk to you like a proper model yeah. maker and give you a bit of responsibility yeah and just let you get on with it which was really really yeah. nice um, again like you say but, you've got the you know you've got the opportunity when you know you've got you know this was you know doing the control panels was like my the first time I was sort of leading a team and yeah. so sort of, you know you then presented with the choice do I you know treat people like shit how I was treated or do I you know you know I had bosses who you know like you know gave me a lot of trust and and um, autonomy and responsibility and I just feel that that's that's always the best way to get the yeah. best out of people you know um, yeah. and we try to I try to break it up by project you know like so like as much as possible give someone everything that they can do every step on so you, you feel like you've you know you made something not part of a production line yeah yeah which, that way maybe. try to yeah. arrange it that way. which is maybe arguably a little bit slower but i still feel like it's more fulfilling and yeah i don't know i kind of think but we smashed it i don't think anything was yeah. late on but that's also because nah. everything was we so well these, to start off with we were doing it a bit more like a, a few of us were doing the cad and then there's assembly but then yeah, yeah as small projects came along we sort of built up yeah yeah yeah. We a few of us had to learn Rhino, so yeah. When it was busy, you can't just sit down and figure out how <laughs> a program works. You just got to like yeah. chip in with what you can do. Um, but then when yeah. it went a bit slower, we we sort of learnt it, and which has been a really good skill now that I've picked yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and laser cutting as well as loads of laser cutting, loads of vinyl cutting. Probably done a bit of that before, but yeah, still. Yeah. <laughs> of that. Yeah, definitely, definitely been a good skill to learn. Mm. Yeah. And the good, we got to go on set quite a lot for that job as well. That was the other yeah. perk of, yeah. of that one. Yeah. To go and install stuff. Um, Which was sometimes a bit awkward. I remember um, you and um, Nizard squeezing into the rebel blockade runner cockpit. <laughs> <laughs> We was not as glamorous as it sounded. Really close, so it, it didn't really matter because we, I mean, I'd met her once before, but I feel like we were desk buddies on Star Wars. And we both turned yeah. up with the same toolbox and we were both just like, we're, we're going to be, we're going to be really good friends. So um, yeah. I think within a week we were like that. And then yeah. we were working in really tight spaces with each other. So yeah. We got to know each other very well. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, even though it was almost full, well, it felt like it was full scale, it was actually kind of scaled down a little bit. And on the inside, it was just scaffolding, eh? Because it was more of an exterior thing. They just wanted to have a few sort of flashing lights inside the, so you could see something through the window. It looked like it was doing something. So you guys were up there, you know. Tiny little space. I'd, I'd, yeah. <laughs> I think at one point they took the window out and we were having to sort of lean back and drill stuff and then, like, would just drop a screw and it would just roll off the front of the spaceship and down like no girl no sorry (laughs) it was a cool cool view from that because there was the whole cave you know the rebel base cave you know um that was on the big stage as well wasn't it the yeah i can't remember what the stage was called but yeah it's like one of my favorite sets I've ever seen, actually. I think that was just like nuts, like the whole cave system with all all the, all the different um, consoles that we were making and the sort of fold down laptops and things like that. Yeah. So there was lots of our stuff dotted around, but it wasn't like as dense as like the Star Destroyer one. There was lots of greenery and lots of rock work and yeah, lots of organic stuff as well as. What's that? I always love, love like a fake forest. Honestly. Yeah, yeah. It's really good. That's and cool. then. Yeah, got to see a bit of filming on that as well, which mm. always adds so much because they, they fill it with smoke and stuff going yeah. on, kind of brings it to life a lot, which is yeah, really good. Yeah, that set was just opposite uh, where we had our t- tea room, wasn't it? So like that, it was easy to kind of pop in. <laughs> it was we didn't like re- looking at the the tea van trying to spot, sp- yeah, select spot. <laughs> yeah nice from across the road yeah yeah because we we didn't really get much involved in like the standby we weren't required to be on set for stuff but in in lunches and break times we could pop our head in and see what was going on there to see lots of yeah all the extras Mm. and stuff yeah yeah Yeah, that's cool and um while you we were on star wars together you'd started um, doing a bit of furniture stuff as like your own personal project stuff as well yeah i did um, while I was at a company because I had more time oh, yeah. so I sort of started doing that in the evenings and yeah I've made quite, quite a few bits of furniture which I've sold and yeah that was really nice sort of like my own sort of creative output rather than something that someone's told me to make Yeah. Um, and using a lot of the rhino and laser cutting skills that I'd learned yeah. Um, yeah. And even a bit of vinyl cutting, I remember you did like a coffee table that had like a, a cool sort of like Art Deco vinyl pattern. Yeah. 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 Cool. Um, yeah. So that's good. Got a little Instagram page for that. It's just sort yeah. of my private little personal personal things. Yeah. So that's how it's furniture, right? On yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's it's beautiful Instagram thing. You've done such a work, good job of taking gorgeous photographs, and yeah, it's thanks. nice to see sort of work in progress stuff as well. Yeah, yeah it's, really cool. it's nice to see everyone's sort of personal work because you just yeah, picture yeah. what well, you see them do at work, and you don't think not that you don't think they can do anything else, but you you don't realize that they can have one yeah. other especially because we you know we, we're hired as makers predominantly you know and quite often there is a team of designers that design and then we're the team of makers that make but so many makers like designing things as well as making things you know they want yeah. to do both sides of it so often the only opportunity to do that is is in your own personal stuff so i always yeah. find it really intriguing what um makers get up to you know what what their artistic eye produces you yeah. know what their vision for things are Mm, really cool I think I've still got some of your your Star Wars-esque work that's funny yeah well well, that started off with just doing stuff for the crew hoodies eh? and you know like we had uh, like our own sort of prop making we kind of took the control panel style and and ran with that and made you know like pictures of um, uh, whatever it was Millennium Falcons or um, Star Destroyers or whatever for our crew hoodies and then yeah yeah, started playing around with that style and doing more you know little bits of nature or little robotic creatures and things like that and to be honest I've carried that on past Star Wars and I'm still doing it and then actually I've got one 
because I've just brought it back from um I managed to get a little workshop now hole in um in Newtown we just set it up You're but yeah I made this the other day so which good. is quite it's got kind of that Star Wars yeah. thing eh? yeah it's, a lot, uh, it's not plugged in right now but it's like a USB thing but yeah it's kind of fun eh yeah but it's, it's a bit more like I haven't really done products before or anything that I could sell but that's the kind of idea with that is that I could potentially do something like that but um I don't know it's a whole other avenue trying to pitch you know like yeah of course. Be, be a businessman as well as a maker as well as a designer as well as, you know <laughs> like finding an audience lot. you can afford to, yeah you can't you can't work on something for three days straight plus all the materials and then yeah. sell it for 100 pounds because no. you don't know, make any money and um yeah it's not worth the time like obviously it's fine if you're making it for yourself but if you want to sell it it's difficult because you've just got to find the audience who've got the budget to sort of buy something that's going to be handmade for them yeah. um yeah sort of marketing yourself and stuff oh it's a whole other game which i haven't fully figured out yet and same for this podcast to be honest i i really enjoyed doing the podcast but i haven't figured out how to get it out properly yet so if there's anyone that's listening to this that knows how to do that stuff, <laughs> definitely oh. <laughs> open to any advice or like if any help that anyone wants to volunteer. But like, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. At some point I'll have to learn it. But um, yeah, it would be good to learn from someone who's good at doing that. And, yeah. you know, at some point it'd be really cool to like pull all our different projects together and have like a, a, um, a kind of a website or a you know a page or whatever where you can have lots of different styles or lots of different um variety of different artwork or and uh, products that you know because then you're going to catch yeah i don't know like you've got a bit of broader offering you know so there might be some a bit more f- something for everyone because obviously well, yeah that lamp that i've just shown you it's not for everyone not everyone's going to want that because it's quite you know um, specific style and same yeah, your your that's furniture that's you know like some people go mad for it but it might not be other people's cup of tea as yeah. well like so it's it's a tricky one to kind of yeah yeah tap into that target audience but um and there's definitely helpful. ways of doing it yeah how did you get on with selling your stuff did you how did you do that um just social media and sort of just getting people to like it. that or i mean I still need to find like yeah. the right audience because all my friends can like and share it, but they don't have income that yeah. they would spend however yeah. much on a side table, which I totally get because I probably yeah. wouldn't either. But there are people out there who who would. Um, That's really tough because you're competing with like IKEA that yeah. can just like out in a factory, and it's just completely different. You know, like you're you're just not coming from that angle eh? like no yeah. and there was a shop um I think it was like Graham and Green and they make beautiful furniture and it was handmade and stuff so I messaged them and said where do you make your stuff that's like I'd love to get involved and they said oh, India and I was like that's why you can sell it and it's handmade it is but the labor is so cheap and you get it mass produced in India like, yes it's handmade but you're probably not paying it very much because you're selling it for yeah so 100 pound um yeah so it's you can't compete with stuff like that so i have found it really difficult um yeah i guess I just got to keep going and yeah it's like, it's almost yeah. like it, you've got to be you, you've got to target people that know the difference between something that is made in india you know something that is made in the uk and and, and yeah. people that are willing to support artists as well uh, yeah. and local you know i think to be honest actually i think lockdown and the whole covid you know thing has made people think about producing things more locally because obviously yeah. disrupted now by that and um over here there's um i'll send you a link to it but it's it's um there's a, a, a facebook page called made in new zealand or a new zealand made products or something like that and it's amazing the, the stuff that's on there there's just so many talented people doing it but um yeah and and there's a community there that that want to support local artists 
yeah. rather than that you know and, and they know that the things on there are going to cost a different price than you know something that's yeah. come from china because yeah. you know it's, you, you're getting something so much more special and different yeah, yeah. And, you know, you're talking about something that they've maybe made 10 or, or 30 of rather than 3,000 you know exactly or more or even more you know what i mean like stuff on amazon will be in, like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's mm-hmm. just, I think also with your stuff, because you've worked on Star Wars, that's quite a good selling point because your stuff is similar to Star Wars, but then it's advertising yourself as like, I worked on Star Wars. And like, it's tricky. Oh. It's tricky to get that into a pitch, you know, and, and not yeah. come across as arrogant or also <laughs> not in trouble for, um, you know, like stealing designs not that we ever made any lamps on on those films it's completely different like it's a completely different yeah. application but like of course there is some of that retro vibe yeah. you know and um, i have been quite heavily influenced by from yeah. four or five years or whatever it was you know making those sort of things so yeah and yeah. Um, yeah it's there's just no rule book on how to do it or what the right do's and don'ts are on it no. so i guess you yeah. just have to figure it out um yeah yeah it's interesting yeah i think it's good though i think like i said hopefully there is a growing interest in that kind of thing i hope so yeah yeah Yeah. so i'd follow a lot more people on instagram and stuff who like people that i know that do their own artwork and and making and stuff and sort of trying to like post their stuff and get other people to get by because yeah i've made a conscious effort to start buying my friend's art as well like just because yeah for one i want to support what they're doing but two actually it's really nice to have your house full of things that your friends have made like it's it's got such a a personal like story to things you know like stuff you buy in a supermarket or stuff you buy off amazon has no story attached to it there's no person you don't know who made that Whereas, yeah. you know, if someone picks up an item, oh, that's interesting, you know, like, oh, that's my friend, blah, 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 she does this, this, and this, you know, like, it's, yeah. it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, when you start shipping to New Zealand, Holly, I'll start buying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I Although probably you... can, but I think it will cost you more than the actual table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at some point, I'm going to have to ship all of my stuff. Well, if I, if I get residency over here, I'll have to ship, you know, send a container over. So, maybe I'll stop. I'll stock oh, up on them. Um, heights furniture for that yeah. <laughs> that's awesome that's nice so good to see you at some oh. point when all this yeah. coronavirus is yeah, yeah exactly yeah who knows when the next time will be but it's good to catch up like this anyway yeah of course yeah. Uh, it sounds like you're doing great as well so keep going it's awesome thank you yeah cool catch you later thank you yeah. bye, bye.